Hey everybody, it's Adam and welcome back to my channel. Super excited to be recording this episode today. We're actually not going to be in the studio, which uh, I know we are like always in the studio, but today we're going on a little adventure. So get your snacks and get comfy. We are going downtown and we're gonna go check out the Art Institute and the Museum of Contemporary Art. I have been dying to go check out an exhibit at the Museum of Contemporary Art um, by Nick Cave. It's almost done showing. I think Sunday is the last day, so I like had to leave my studio. I normally don't uh, leave my studio very much. I normally don't leave my neighborhood very much, but I was like, I, I can't miss this because the photos I've seen of it look really cool, and I wanted to go experience it firsthand. And also, it's also just like nice and probably good for me to uh, get out of my studio. And I don't know, I actually really like going on these little kind of trips by myself. I just went by myself downtown and checked out the museum by myself. And I think, I don't know, maybe there's like one point in my life where I got really uncomfortable or nervous to go do things by myself. But I think as I've gotten like more and more comfortable and confident with myself, I actually I actually love doing things by myself. It's really nice. And I don't know, I mean, it's like weird, but anyways, we're at, a, we're at the Art Institute and I always enter on the, the new wing of the building. It's got like the contemporary art and I like this space. It's really bright, it's really open. The ceilings are really high and there's something really pleasant about just walking around the space, even if you hate contemporary art or modern art, which I think is lame because I, I actually think the contemporary art is very interesting. It's kind of cool. Um, I feel like sometimes it gets made fun of or it's like, I don't know, dismissed, but I think some of the contemporary art is very interesting and I love looking at contemporary art or modern art. You know, for me, I think the biggest draw about contemporary art is it's kind of like often pushing a boundary or it's kind of doing something that's not traditionally accepted. And maybe it's more of like a statement about my person or kind of like my own identities, but I really like the idea of spaces that are kind of more accepting or have like a broader range of like what is good. You know, I think a lot of older, I guess it also depends on like when you're judging it and like, you know, now contemporary art is different than, you know, contemporary art uh, like in the past, but I think the spaces at which contemporary art is made, it's kind of like, it's more accepting. It's, it's, it's more open-minded. You know, people are more interested in kind of doing interesting things. Whereas on the opposite end of that, where you've kind of got like, I'll just kind of use like the word traditionalists, you know, kind of the people that are going to be like, well, this is how it is done. Like, this is how it's always been done. This is, you know, I, it's hard to really kind of uh, neatly pack that into a group, but I think you kind of get the idea of what I'm trying to communicate. It's like this idea of how things should be done. And for me personally, I've never liked existing in that space, mostly because it's like you have to follow this kind of checklist or you have to do things in a certain way. And if you do those things in a certain way, like the community will accept you and it's like, oh, this is good. This kind of checks all of our boxes. But if you try to exist outside of those, it's like, oh, this doesn't have value because this isn't, well, this isn't how, you know, so-and-so would do it, or this isn't uh, normally how it's done. And I don't really like that. And I think, you know, ceramics kind of, uh, Ceramics just as a medium itself kind of exists, has those two different attitudes in it. Because you have, you know, ceramicists that are trying to like kind of push boundaries or do interesting things. And then you have other ceramicists who are kind of like, oh no, this is how I do it. And this is the right way to do it. And if you're not doing it this way, well, you're not doing it right. And um, I think for me, that's, that's harder to stomach. And at least like when I go through museums or I, you know, look around at art I like, I think I'm just, I'm, I'm more drawn to the contemporary spaces. I just, I think they're more open-minded and I like that. That makes me happy because I think what my whole takeaway with, you know, uh, art is basically just, you know, making stuff that makes me happy. And um, <laughs> it's kind of like whatever you can, whatever you can get away with and, um, I don't know, just like whatever little expression. And I, I think maybe it's also just like a more negative reaction to people being like, oh, well, that's not good because of this and this. You know, I, I really don't like 
um, when people uh, treat other people like that. But I'll kind of quit rambling. Uh, Ed Hopper has a series of uh, these paintings, and a lot of them convey um, kind of like loneliness. And actually, during like peak pandemic, I, I lived alone in my apartment at the time. I I like I connected with a lot of his art because I thought it was like really uh, summed up my just like feelings of being in a city but being totally alone. And a lot of his work kind of uh, kind of shows that. And then another thing I think is always fun at art uh, galleries or whatever is like the type of people that connect with art. Like, um, I don't know, it's just funny. It's not funny, funny is the wrong word. It's interesting to me how like certain people gravitate to certain art. I feel like it's very often a reflection of themselves, which uh, totally makes sense, but it is funny to see it in practice when you see like certain groups of people gravitating to like certain genres of art. I, I just think it's kind of cool to, to see um, sometimes being at an art gallery, it's like just as interesting to people watch as it is to to look at the art. And then the Art Institute also has a wing of kind of like, I don't know, it's kind of like uh, interior design, fun furniture, bauhaus -y vibes. And it's always cool. I feel like I'm walking through some like aesthetic uh, Instagram house uh, collection of their furniture, but I like this stuff. I have some complaints of like the uh, I'll, I'll use the word, maybe I'll, I don't know if it's the thing, but the mood boardification of interior design, where I feel like quote unquote good design is again, just following that checklist of like things that are known to be good and people don't really do adventurous things that kind of fall outside of that um, realm, which I think is a bummer because I get going on Instagram to like get inspiration, but man, when every single like quote unquote aesthetic apartment has the exact same 10 sets of objects, kind of ruins it a little bit, uh, at least, at least for me. But like, I guess I'm guilty because like my apartment does have like some of these things, but I, I don't know that whatever i can talk for like a whole episode on my thoughts of like mood boards and the problems that come with them but the art institute also has this section i think a lot of people kind of miss it's not very busy ever but it's got small scale versions of chicago public art so they have like the flamingo which was done by calder and they've got i actually don't know the artists that did this i'll look it up and throw it up on screen and they also have like the pablo picasso like lion thing which is cool and I don't know if this is uh, art somewhere in Chicago, but I really have always liked stained glass. I think it's uh, so pretty and I like light and colors and it's kind of all of those things um, combined together. So I always try to think of ways maybe to like add light and color to ceramics more. Maybe it'd be cool if you could like, I don't know, do something with really thin porcelain or something with light and color, but I don't know what maybe one day I'll try to get something working for that. But there's this section of the Art Institute which has moon jars. And if you don't know, moon jars are a traditionally like Korean uh, kind of vessel or form in pottery. And oh my God, I sat and looked at these moon jars for a while. They were really cool. If you guys have followed me at all, you know I like making moon jars. Um, so it was very cool to see some like um, very old, uh, very cool moon jars. Um, at least for me, when I was learning a lot of ceramic forms, I would like kind of gravitate to like a couple vessels that made sense to me. And I liked, I thought they were like really satisfying. And it was very cool to go and appreciate um, some in the Art Institute. Maybe one day I could go to Korea and see them. That would be even cooler. But right now the Art Institute has, I think it's just like a temporary uh, showing, but it's got kind of like from her studio, a bunch of Bridget Riley's um, illustrations or your prints or I'm not really really sure exactly what they are but man these were really cool I did not know much about her work and I honestly I didn't read a, a ton about it I was mostly kind of just looking at them but I really liked it I feel like these patterns or just like patterns in general are very I hate to use the word trendy right now, but they are very relevant, at least in a lot of like ceramic objects I see. I see lots of people kind of all over Instagram glazing in like this like geometric patterned way. Um, I don't know if it's just like a re-emergence of kind of like Memphis style in the 90s or, or what exactly it is, but man, these are super cool. Um, I don't know how long this show is going, but if you're in Chicago, it is maybe not uh, worth a whole trip to the Art Institute, but definitely if you're here, check it out because they're really, really cool. And they're kind of a little trippy too, because like 
they really play kind of optical illusions on you and um, it was very neat to see but there was kind of we I kind of went to most of the uh, spots in the museum I normally like to go look at and I the only place we haven't been yet is kind of like the impressionist like older art area um, I like I like this area. I know I was kind of complaining how I like more contemporary art, but I do enjoy um, some of the like impressionistic art. Um, this is the Georgia O'Keeffe. I, I know it says sky above clouds, but man, I look at that thing and every time in my head I'm like, it's the iceberg painting because I just see a lot of like icebergs. <laughs> but I always really like looking at the Monet uh, paintings. I I really think it's very cool how the kind of like this whole style of painting like this impressionist uh, time has like I just like how there's like a lot of nice colors and how kind of your proximity to the art changes your perception of it which I think is that's really neat um, I also like how there's it kind of like all of these things kind of just like blend together like there's really no outlines on anything like some art is like very like um you know like cell shaded like there's these like thick outlines on everything but i really like this impressionist style where everything's kind of just like it's like a watercolor it all just kind of bleeds together and i think it's very pretty and i always like uh stopping stopping uh, through there just to take a peek but i had spent a lot of time at the art museum at this point it was pretty time consuming actually to like look and film at everything and um i wanted to leave but i always like i feel like uh, art museum uh gift stores are on at just a whole nother level and <laughs> it's fun to like look at the look at the stuff there I, I didn't buy anything but it is it is still fun to look and um so it, it's time to leave the art institute and there's really the like millennium park is right right around it and there's like the maggie daly park as well which is really pretty um, it's a really pretty area to be like stuck downtown in Chicago, but there is a bunch of uh, food trucks right near the Art Institute, and they, I was like, oh, that sounds pretty good. I could go for just a burrito, <laughs> and it was a pretty good uh, burrito. I felt like a big tourist because I was uh, sitting in Millennium Park eating lunch. I was just eating away at my burrito, but <laughs> it was it was kind of nice. It was also funny this time of day. It was way busier than I expected because I figured like everyone's at work, but I guess it's probably mostly just like tourists and um, kids or something. It was high schoolers. I don't know, maybe field trips, but I made this little bird friend. Um, he was kind of hanging out near me and uh, I fed him some of my burrito. <laughs> I wasn't sure if he liked the uh, uh, burrito part, like the tortilla part of the burrito, the bean part. Um, so I, tr <laughs> I tried feeding him some different things. I think he liked the tortilla part of the burrito and he was picking it apart for just the tortilla part. So uh, he was not interested in the beans. That was, <laughs> uh, I, I wish I spent more time with the bird. I, that was good. I like the little bird. He's so cute. Um, but <laughs> we got to walk north because uh, it's like 3 o'clock and the museum closes at 5. And I didn't know how long I would spend. So I walked north. And the, the walk was pretty nice, actually. You're basically just walking through, um, I guess this is just kind of like River North and Streeterville. I don't know. I don't really spend a lot of time uh, in this part of the city. But I get why people like it. It's very pretty, um, very fancy looking. And it was a nice walk. I, um, I I was very excited though about the exhibit at the Museum of Contemporary Art. Nick uh, Cave is a Chicago artist that, from what I've seen, does really cool stuff. And I I heard so many good things about this. I was uh, very excited to visit. And his was up on the third floor, but they have a little uh, Calder uh, section. And I always growing up was really obsessed with uh, Alexander Calder and his stuff. I don't know why, but I think the concept of just like his art kind of having like motion and showing kind of things in, in balance and tension, like I really think it's beautiful. I really think it's cool. And um, I wanna, I like, I'd love to do mobiles. I don't know if it's just like, oh, it's cause he likes Calder, but maybe you could do like a really cool ceramics mobile or something. I, there's something about a mobile that I think is just a lot of fun or, or something that has movement in some way but so I stopped at the the Calder thing and that was cool and uh, this was the Nick Cave thing and oh my god the show he like put on and the way he kind of curated the space was just it was 
fantastic. Like, people were just, you know, it, not just my reaction, but like everyone around you was just like, wow, and like, this is amazing, or like, this is so fantastic. And it was like, it really kind of inspired a sense of awe. Um, especially in kind of like the big room with all these colorful uh, the beads on the wall he he has this like whole line of work um, his uh, sound suits and I think at this point in his career he's made like over 600 of these and go look up his kind of explanation and you can read about it from him himself but at least you know the takeaway I kind of uh, took and what I'll kind of try to do my best to convey is like these suits kind of obscure the visual um, judgment of the person wearing them. So any kind of uh, like biases or judgments that someone might hold for another person, you know, you can't kind of impress them on someone in a sound suit because it obscures that. And it kind of like grants the wearer a little bit of kind of like freedom from all of these societal uh, judgments or assumptions. And I thought that was really beautiful. And I, it kind of hit me um, like, and I had a pretty emotional response to it because I definitely, you know, I don't, I'm not Nick Cave and I don't deal with, you know, all the things he deals with, but, you know, in terms of like my own expression of myself or like where I feel comfortable, I totally, I don't know. I just like, it really resonated with me, this concept of like putting on this, like almost like costume to kind of like obscure yourself, um, and I thought it was really beautiful, um, like a, a really beautiful reaction to like a really, uh, you know, uncomfortable, uh, you know, thing that people do. And he, you know, turned these, uh, that kind of reality into these like amazing um, pieces of art. And like, I was just totally uh, blown away by it. It was um, definitely my favorite uh, experience of the day. And um, it definitely... It's sticking with me, you know, it was really, it was really cool what he did. I'm very impressed by it. But the MCA also has a first floor, which had like two kind of uh, big galleries. And I'm going to be honest, I didn't like, um, I feel like I had kind of known a little bit about the other artists work and I was kind of going into these ones blind, but it was a, I mean, it was a really cool space. And I think the, um, kind of gist of all of these pieces were kind of, um, you know, uh, critiques of society and kind of uh, how it is uh, really cruel to um, people that maybe don't uh, have value or like a traditional value right and um, it was uh, impressive this this big piece was um, actually a, a a memorial to the more than three million uh, Vietnamese that lost their lives during the US occupation of Vietnam which I did not realize that when I went into the space and I didn't even realize it until I went up close to it and you could see the names um, from afar, it just kind of looked like some you know piece of modern art, but man, they really did a good job of uh, conveying the magnitude of that because it was really um, it was very like profound uh, to see. It was I, I don't want to use the word cool because that's not cool in any sense, but like they did a good job of uh, conveying an emotion, that's for sure. But that was like my whole day. Um, I was really <laughs> really tired. I'd I'd walked like. I don't even know how far I walked, but I know it was a lot because um, I was walking all over the museums and, you know, from the train and whatever. So it was like I really wanted to go home. Um, so we started our, our little journey back and I actually really like taking the trains. I wish the city invested more in public transit. I f honestly feel like what makes a city like a good city is it's um, like accessible public transit. So I like that we have the trains. I wish we had more, but it's not really a far, uh, it's, I mean, there's like six or seven stops from um, kind of the MCA back to Bridgeport, but it was very nice um, to be back home in Bridgeport, but it was uh, super nice that we you know, took a little adventure out of uh, our neighborhood. And I'm very glad we checked out the exhibit, but we're back in the studio and it's the end of the video, which means it's time for everyone's favorite comment of the day. So uh, this week we have kind of a fun comment, but it just says, uh, his earrings remind me of Hal from Hal's Moving Castle. And um, that's actually one of my favorite uh, compliments that I get in the comments. It's not the first time I've uh, seen someone say that. I really, I love uh, Studio Ghibli movies. Uh, Hal's Moving Castle is uh, definitely one of my favorites. And actually, it was, it was uh, two days ago, I watched Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind. And man, that was such a good Studio Ghibli movie. I love the 
the whole universe that is just like created in those uh, like in those films are so so good. It's just like a it's like a warm, cozy blanket just gets wrapped around you when you watch it. It's they're literally the best. So I, anytime anyone makes the Howl comparison, I just um, I always smile. So th thank you, uh, thank you for that. And I hope you guys liked the video. I know it was a little bit of a different format. But uh, hopefully you did, and don't forget to like it. If you did, ask any questions in the comments. Uh, hit the bell to get notified. And if you're not subscribed, you know, check that out. So thank you.